Buongiorno Chiara, come stai? Sto molto bene, grazie Dominic. E lei? Anch'io sto bene, grazie. Welcome to this video where we're going to try to bring you up to speed on the fundamentals of Italian pronunciation by guiding you through the various letters of the alphabet, during which we will cover the sounds that are familiar in the English language to the Italian and those that are very different. We will ask you to repeat phrases or we will simply give you a phrase and ask you to pause the video and do your own version of it, record yourselves and listen back so that you get familiar with what these sounds are. They're easier than they are in Italian, in, in English. The Italian language is much more phonetic, but that doesn't mean it doesn't carry its challenges. So we look forward to guiding you through this preliminary step and hope to see you at the end feeling more confident in Italian. So I think the best place to start is with the alphabet and we'll go simply through the 21 letters and identify their sounds and how they differ from English sounds. Some of them are the same, but many of them are different. The good thing is that we start with the first letter, which is the vowel, A. It's the same in every word in Italian, whereas that letter in English has many different pronunciations. It has only one sound in Italian. And that sound is best represented by this phrase. La cara mamma canta la cantata. Chiara, would you like to say that for us, please? La cara mamma canta la cantata. So you can see the A sound remains consistent all the way through. Please pause the video at this point and record yourself saying that very phrase. La cara mamma canta la cantata and see how different it sounds to you from what, it's, what we sound like. Make sure that you practice this as much as possible because having accurate pronunciation relies on practice and you need to record so that you actually hear what is coming out of your head rather than listening to yourself, which is really a representation of what you hear within your head. And they can be two different things. So it, I can't emphasize enough that recording yourself and listening back to the recording is a very important way of improving your pronunciation. We go on then to the letter B. Now B is an easy letter for Italian as it is in English, the same pronunciation. So whereas in English we would say baby, in Italian we might say bimbo. So it's the same sound. Can you think of other Italian words with B, Chiara? Babbo. Bambino. Bambola. So you can hear the sound is the same as it is in English. The thing to draw attention to is that you can have double consonants in Italian which must be emphasized. So you have a short energized vowel and then a very present consonant. So babbo, babbo, we stick to the B a little bit longer than we would a double B in English. Other than that, Bs are very simple. C is the next letter in both our languages and the beginning of the complications for English speakers in Italian. Because C is often confused, CH in English is CH, but CH in Italian is K. So we'll run you through the rules of this as easily as we can. Please repeat the words after you hear them. So the letter C is what we call hard when it is followed by an A, an O, or a U, an L, or an R. So we call that hard, and it's represented by the IPA symbol that looks like a lowercase k. So, caro, coro, cucuzza, clemente, crescendo, chiara, now you see Chiara threw in her name there, and it is also with a hard sound. But when we spell it out in Italian, because it's C-I, it has to have an H in it to have that K sound. So Chiara is C-H-I, and K is always spelt with an H if it's follow a C followed by an E. K is C-H-E. So I and E cause a little bit of complication when they're around the letter C. If you want a hard sound, you have to add a letter H 
when it's got an I or an E after it. So, chiara, che, chiuso, all examples of hard K sound but with an H in it. If you see a C followed by an I or an E, the sound is what we call soft. Can you give us some examples of that, please, Chiara? Cena. Cena, C-E-N-A. What, what about C-I? Ciliegia. You see how that sounds in English, like it's got an H in it? It doesn't. Please be aware of that. C-I, ciliegia. What about if we want to get a cha sound? How do we achieve that in, in Italian? Ciao. Ciao. And you all are familiar with that word, but C-I-A-O, ciao. Yeah? And cioccolato, C-I-O, cioccolato. So get used to the idea that that sound of ch does not have an H in it. Does not have, I've just said, does not have an H in it. Now the reason I said av is because in Italian the letter H is silent. And we'll find out more about that in a minute. We move on to the letter D. Now that should be an easy letter, shouldn't it? But what do we find often the problem with the letter D for English speaking people? is that it's a little bit too far back in the mouth, isn't it? Yes. And we call that a wet D. We need it to make sure that you bring your tongue forward in your mouth and make contact, the tip of your tongue, with the top back, the back of your top front teeth. D -d 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 -d. So it feels a little bit like a lisp, possibly in English, but it needs to be well forward. Dentale. Dentale. We come now to our second vowel, which is the letter E. And in Italian, how many sounds do we have associated with that letter, Chiara? We have two sounds, open and closed. Ah, and how do they differ? E, E. So the first is an open E, and it feels a little bit closer to the vowel A, ah, doesn't it? If we start with A, ah, E, E. So as you move from open A towards closed E, and then the next vowel would be E, you find that more halfway point of A, E, is open A, closed E, and in the middle, E, A, E, E. Now, you can see words that have spelling exactly the same, and sometimes they have an open E, and sometimes they have a closed E. For example, affetto means to slice, and affetto means affection. Can you try an example of that too, Chiara? Esca, for example, and esca. So, because the word looks the same, it can have different open or closed vowels, and the thing to do is check it in the dictionary. I can't encourage you too much to make sure that you always refer to the dictionary. Even Italians have to look words up in the dictionary sometimes to clarify the proper pronunciation. Is that true, Chiara? Completely. So don't be afraid of the dictionary and don't guess because more often than not, you may guess wrong. And as you've seen, just because it's open in one instance, it may be closed in another. We'll move on to the letter F, which is the very similar, if not identical, to the sound we make in English. So it's an easy letter. So, for example, farfalla. And can you think of another example? Uh, fortuna. Fiero. Favorito. So you can see the same sound as we have in English. We move then rapidly along to the next most complicated letter in Italian, and that is the letter G. Now, how many of you have been to an Italian restaurant and seen on the, on the menu wonderful things like gnocchi and tagliatelle or spaghetti bolognese? All of these things are pronounced incorrectly by most English speakers. And the rules for G in Italian are similar to those for C in terms of you get a hard and a soft sound, but they're more complicated because if a G is followed by an L or an N, we end up with a slightly unfamiliar sound to English. For example, E-G-L-I is E-L-I. 
not Egley. And O G N U O uh, N O on Nuno. So we get and the word gnocchi, in fact, is G N O C C H I gnocchi. Can we find some example words chiara for the G hard G sound? Surely, for example, garofano. Garofano, indeed. Godere. Gusto. Ghiaccio. Ghetto. Gloria. And gradita. Gradita. We'll move on then to the soft G. So we have the similar sort of sound to G, G. So examples of that are when the G is followed by an E or an I. As in the following words. Gioco. Gettone. Giallo. Gioia. Giubilo. So again, repeat those words and record yourselves and see if you can see the differences in your pronunciation. We have then a few examples of the GL series of letters. G-L-I. Egli. Tagliere. Tagliatelle. Taglia. Tagliuto. And tagliuolo. And taglio. We then move to the letter H. And the letter H is very unusual again because it is completely silent. So you will see an H often in Italian, but it has no pronunciation value. So we do not aspirate it as we do in English with hotel or have. In Italian, you see the letter H-O or H-A or H-A-I, all conjugations of the verb to have, but you never pronounce, pronounce the H. O, A, A, for example. Yeah? Chiara, can you think of any other examples for H? For example, the English word hotel, as we were saying before, O, I, Aia, ouch, in Italian. Very good. So just be clear, when you see a letter H in Italian, the only time it has any impact is when it appears after a letter C or G, and it has the impact of hardening that sound. So ghetto is G-H-E-T-T-O, rather than G-E-T-T-O-N-E -E is gettone. So an H hardens either a G or a C sound, but it doesn't in and of itself have a sound of its own. What can we tell you about the letter I? It has one sound. For example, in the phrase I primi bimbi di mimi. Chiara, would you like to have a go at that phrase for us? Sure. I primi bimbi di mimi. Record yourselves, play it back, and see how close you get to that. The other thing about I is it can be used in what we call a weak position. So you'll see it in the word piano, for example. Now, we don't say piano. It's really to give the impetus of the consonant pia, piano. And so we call that a weak position. And you will see in IPA that letter or sound usually represented by what appears to be a lowercase letter J. So that happens quite a bit. We have piano. Can you think of any other examples, Chiara? Fieno. Fieno, exactly. Very good. When we come then to the letter L, we have the same issue as it being dental. L is quite a simple letter in and of itself in Italian, don't you think, Chiara? Yes, absolutely. So don't panic about L and don't panic about M because M is exactly the same in English as it is in Italian. Mother, Mamma. What else do you think, Chiara? Uh, misericordia. So exactly the same sound. Bilabial m voiced consonant. Now, the letter N is sometimes a little bit confusing because it moves about in your mouth depending on, on the letters surrounding it. Would you agree with that, Chiara? Definitely. So let's go for the easy option first. So when it's just simply what we call a nasal sound, an N, N, nessuno, naso, for example. 
it can also have then a little bit further back in your mouth a sound when it comes before a C or a G, for example. Can you think of an example of that, please, Chiara? Ancora. Angoscia. So you can see there your tongue is actually raised in front of your uvula, angoscia, rather than at the front of your mouth, undone there, for example. It can also be the sound in gnocchi, gnocchi, where it is uh, preceded by a G, so you get that ognuno gnocchi sort of sound. Can you think, Chiara, you're quite proficient at, at English and Italian is your native tongue. Can you think of a sound in English that's similar to that ny ognuno sound? It's difficult, isn't it? It is quite difficult because it's not something, they're not very relatable. Nye. We used to say, people used to say to me, say onion, but Onion is a very monodimensional sound, whereas ny is quite a thick tongue sort of yes. sound, isn't it? Yes, definitely. So it's very difficult to find English equivalents for these words. Uh, ly is also difficult. Egli is close to million, people say, but million, again, is a little bit too monodimensional. We'll move on, shall we, from the N's to the O, because O is another one that has two possibilities. We have an open O and we have a closed O. Chiara, I'll hand over to you for, to give us example of each of those two, please. Of course. For example, open O, fosse, closed O, fosse. Can you hear the difference there? Open, O, closed, O. So it's always easier, I find, to start with the vowel A and then move towards the closed one. So A, O, O. How do you feel about that, Chiara? Yes, definitely, because the positioning, it's much closer. So if you were to say that transition of uh, vowels, please, Chiara, how would you do that? A, O, O. Lovely. So if we gave an example of a phrase with an open A, it would be something like O il core vuoto. Now there's a bit of a trick in there because the final O of vuoto is closed, but all the other O are open. O il core vuoto. Chiara? O il cuore vuoto. Lovely. An example of a closed O sound. Non sono contento. Chiara. Non sono contento. Can you hear the difference between the O and the O? So they're very close. The difference isn't extreme. And actually, again, depending on what region of Italy you're in, you will hear variations of that. Would you agree with that, Chiara? Most definitely, yes. An example of a phrase that has both open and closed O in it is Una donna povera comprò un orologio. Chiara, why don't you say that and see if they can hear a difference. Una donna povera comprò un orologio. So the word orologio is a great example of a string of O's but only one of them is open. And it is the second last one, isn't it? Yes. The other clue about this is in spoken Italian, only stressed syllables can have open or closed uh, e or o in them. Unstressed syllables should be all closed in spoken Italian. Sometimes in sung Italian, however, you will be offered the option of opening them depending on where they lie in your register or in the music so that they become more homogenous uh, in terms of sound and uh, you need to be guided by your vocal professionals in that respect. Okay, so we're getting now back to some familiar territory with the letter P in that the letter P is the same in Italian as it is in English. So whereas we might say poor Peter paid uh, for his problems in Italian, 
povero Pietro ha pagato per, per i suoi problemi. So we have the same sort of sound. What about the letter Q, Chiara? Letter Q also has a similarity with English in the sense that it's always followed by the letter U. Exactly. And it has the same sound, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. Quale, for example. Questo. So Q, U, always the same in English and in Italian. Then we get to R. R is an interesting letter because it is always pronounced in Italian. There is always some sort of tongue flick or roll. It's never neutralized as it often is in English. For example, the word F-A-R in English is far, C-A-R, car, but in Italian we would say far and car. So R's always have some sort of uh, tongue involvement. And they're either rolled, as in car, or flicked, as in amore. So when it is intervocalic, so between two vowels, the R is a flick. So amore, core, then if it's at the end of the word on its own, it will be rolled, like amor or cuor. And when it's at the beginning of a word, it will also be rolled, raggio di sole. Can you think of any other examples of either rolled or flick, Chiara? Ramarro, for example. Horror. Lovely. And terror. Sometimes we might use even a position three, what I call a position three on an R, where it'll be a mega roll. And that's to create some drama. For example, if you are saying the word terrore, you might feel that it's appropriate to give even more emphasis to the R. But use that one with a degree of uh, discretion. <laughs> so S is another letter which has a few variables in Italian. And we call them voiced or unvoiced. Let's do the unvoiced ones first, shall we, Chiara? For example, if S is followed by a vowel or an unvoiced consonant. So, for example, the word sento. Or semplice. Or solo. Or sfortunato. Exactly. Or stolto. So where it's a followed by an unvoiced consonant or a vowel, it's an unvoiced S. However, when it occurs between two vowels, as in the word R-O-S-A, this becomes voiced. So we end up with a Z sound. So R-O-S-A would be pronounced, Chiara? Rosa. Rosa. C-A-S-A. -A. Casa. So you can see where this sound is voiced. Z. It sounds like a bit of mosquito, doesn't it? Casa. Cosa. So that's when it's between two vowels. Also, it can be voiced when it appears immediately before a voiced consonant. And just to remind you that the voiced consonants are G, B, D, L, R, M, N, and V. So if we can think of some examples for that, S, G words would be like sguardo. What about an S, B word? Sbaglio. Sbaglio, lovely. An S, D word? Sdegno. Uh, S, L. Slancio. S, R. Sradicare, maybe. S M Smania S N Snello and I'll leave the last one perhaps to you Chiara S V Svolto Svolto So try those and make sure that you get a Z sound with your S Sdegno Sbaglio Svolto Then we have our third option of a SH sound when you see S followed by the letter C-E or C-I. And here we have examples on these words as well. Chiara, would you like to talk us through some examples of that? Sure. Scendo, scienza, for example. And? And sciocco. Lovely. And sciuppata. 
So, and Shara. So you can see SCI or SCE has the similar sound to SH in English. Sh. Yes? So again, that symbol is represented by the IPA symbol. It looks like a rather stretched out S or an F without a mark in the middle of it. We get then to the letter T and we're getting very close to the end of the alphabet. T is a common problem letter in Italian. It's very simple, but it's often pronounced very poorly by English speakers because we leave the tip of our tongue too far back in our mouths when we say it. So it sounds what we call wet. T -t -t totally terrible T's. Whereas in Italian, we need to push our tongue right up against the back of our front top teeth and say, tutto, tutti letti sotto questo tetto sono distrutti. So we have that lovely contact between tip of tongue and back of top front teeth. Tutti letti sotto questo tetto sono distrutti. Please try that and see how you get on. So now we get to our final vowel, the letter U. After all these other complicated vowels of E and O, what can we say about the letter U, Chiara? The letter U is uh, much simpler because it has only one way of pronunciation. And that is? U. U. So, let's try a few example words with U. Uh, tu. Subito. U is very simple, but it can be used in a diphthong sound and becomes then what we sometimes call a semi-vowel or a semi-consonant. So, for example, in the word warm, or it has a little bit of a sound similar to what we hear as a W in English. Warm. Uh, so, be aware that U, although it has one sound, can be used in combinations with letters that give it a slightly different shape but not a different sound. And that's called a, when it's in its a weak position. Guardo. Fuoco. Nearly home with V. Now V is also the same as it is in English. It's always the same sound. So for example, vero. Vino. Volto. Vivace. Vento. Vita. So you can see it's the same sound as we have in Victory, uh, Victoria, Volvo, same as in English. Now we get perhaps to one of the most uh, inconsistent letters in the Italian alphabet and that's the letter Z. So we have voiced and unvoiced options. With the letter S, any double S is always unvoiced, so stesso for example. But with the letter Z, double Z can be both voiced and unvoiced. And I wish I was able to give you a bulletproof rule, but there is none. You simply have to look up the word and uh, in the dictionary and find from there whether it's supposed to be uh, a, a double Z which is voiced or an unvoiced double Z. What about the difference between those two sounds? So unvoiced double Z sounds like TTS. Mezzo. And voiced double Z, for example, Chiara sounds more like Mezzo. So it's got a Z sound. So you can tell whether you're using your voice in it. Mezzo. Or Mezzo. And some of those words mean spelt the same, pronounced differently, have different meanings. A nice example sentence that we have come up with for you to practice on this is the following. La Pazza mezzo soprano mangia una pizza sui mezzi pubblici. La pazza mezzo soprano mangia una pizza sui mezzi pubblici. So that's the Italian alphabet in its entirety. I hope we've given you enough of an overview of the sounds of the Italian alphabet so that you can start to practice your pronunciation and reading as much as possible. It's a very phonetic language, so don't be panicked. We don't have any O-U-G-H 
problems that we have in English. We don't have any I before C except after E or whatever the rule is there. It's much more straightforward, which is why Italian students never have spelling bees in their schools, lucky them. Once you know these phonetic rules, it's very difficult to get wrong. So pay attention to these rules, learn them as much as you can and enjoy yourself speaking Italian. Thanks very much for joining me today, Chiara. I'm sure that the students will have uh, benefited from hearing a male and a female voice speaking these words. Is there anything you'd like to say, Chiara, in salutation? Grazie, Dominic, per avermi avuto qui oggi e buon italiano a tutti voi. Grazie, Chiara. È stato un grande piacere. Piacere mio.